the madman. Well, the last two arenas I've done are Druid and Priest, so it's going to be the king that gets picked here. It is good to be the king. Are you watching any new anime coming out? Uh, right now I'm following two of them. One's one like I'm very excited about with each new release. It's Blue Lock, the soccer anime. But describing it generally as a soccer anime doesn't do it justice. Like that's actually the only one that I'm watching, uh, I think. But there's one coming up that I plan to watch, which is also this season. It's the it's the Wolf Boy guy who can transform into different things. I don't remember the name of that one. Fumetsu, yes. Okay, very good. Shaman, let's begin with the Drake. Aga. Horda. Gaida. Oh, Muck Pools! Oh! It's a really good card. I am surprised that the win rate is not higher. I'm surprised that Overconfident Work is higher than Muck Pools. I, I think this card's insane. Like, this is the type of card I would expect to have, like, a 60% win rate in your deck. Anyways, people maybe not using it correctly, who knows. I do like this reflection card. Yeah, people might be just doing muck pulls incorrectly. It is possible. Eh, teacher, I guess. Notably, by the way, I'm not watching the new Bleach. It might just be because I never finished the old one. Uh, it... It's a good anime, don't get me wrong, but I don't have that much time, so I can't spend my time watching anime that's merely good. Oh, I forgot completely! Like, of course, another anime I'm watching right now, one that I'm intently watching, is Hero Academia. Love that one. I'm gonna go Acolyte here. Uh, Dig Day, I suppose. We got enough twos. Fun Caretaker is really good, especially with the Muck Pools, but even without Muck Pools, it's still quite good. Mm, Stego? Stego. Ooh, Genera. On the topic of Spy X Family, I do believe it's very good, but I am saving it. Like, some anime I save for the... Someday I'm gonna watch this with someone. Like, try to earmark a few. Locking Fountain. Oh, Locking Fountain again. Holy crap, this is looking to be a pretty spicy arena. That, that makes it, uh... That suddenly, like, threw it way into a control deck. I only have one spell right now. That's that's a reason not to pick more spawn. Uh, this deck looks like it's a bit more of the control Lee deck. Uh, which makes Sin Runner better because I'm gonna be behind more, I suppose. So Sin Runner can actually kill a guy. So for that reason, it's Sin Runner. I'm gonna go Phoenix. I don't think I have very many ways to deal with things fast. That are cheap. <laughs> wow, look at that 8, 9, and 10. It's all uh, fast cards on 8, 9, and 10. But but they are, you know, uh, you can't really call an 8 drop a 9 drop or a 10 drop a fast card. Anyways, Phoenix to have some fast slow cards, or it's fast middle. Low cards. Oh my god, I might actually discover a card with new Yeti. That's... Yeti's already decent, but... Yeti plus card is very yes. I think Brewmaster in this deck is a net negative. But there is a Crud Caretaker to bounce, and a Maze Guide. I got some big cards I can bring back with Brewmaster, too. Yeah, I'll go with Brew. Mmm... <laughs> Lock down that late game? I'm not gonna count the Primordial Drake as a big late game card, nor am I gonna call, count Walking Fountain as a big late game card. These are like more of anti-aggro cards. These are big cards, and that's a big card. So I have three big cards so far, which isn't that many. If I go off of that justification, I can't actually justify picking a Stoneborn in general. And we should certainly uh, start uh, saying we're done with the big cards at this point. Oh, double Gorilla Bot. That's a card that gets better the more you have of it. I think if I could, I would pick like six Gorilla Bot. Ooh, Convincing Disguise is quite a good card. Like Bomber. 
Okay, these are three good cards, and I don't have any six drops. Uh, by default, I would pick Portal. But Bog Beast is nice because it is uniquely the only six drop I would have. And so I like having different mana cost cards. Uh, I'm gonna pick Portal, but I'm just gonna say that I'm not entirely certain that this is the right pick. Uh, crushing Hand, nice removal. I'm a control deck, so the green jelly is worse. I think Feral Spirit's pretty good here. Yep. Ooh, another portal. Dang. Oh, Carving Chisel, though. I'm a man of statistics, and it's like, oh yeah, that's a pretty high win rate. Must be good. Uh, it does, indeed, synergize this, the uh, Infuse and with the Stormwind Champion and Totemic Reflection. Pretty easy pick. And I actually picked up a decent number of spells recently, so that Marsh Spawn might actually hit. It's also 3 mana, 3 4. My, my arena deck's actually really insane. Uh, so, the quick stat feedback here is that the average card in my deck here uh, makes this deck have a 57.4% win rate on average. Anyways, I think this is a really strong deck. Uh, turn 1, Muck Pulls ideally. Turn 2, we got strong plays like Chisel. Uh, Loot Hoarder, Mad Bomber, Maze Guide, Hunter, Brewmaster, and it can play Hogsteed on too. A lot of good 3-drops, which I think is very good, because having a 2-drop then a 3-drop is quite good, and then like you do want a 4-drop after that, but it can be two 2-drops, two it could be a 2-drop and a hero power. Uh, looks like we got our early game pretty secure. We actually have like a little bit of a gap in the 5-6-7-drop area, uh, and the late game is really strong. I think it's probably, like, if there was a place to have a gap, uh, it would be 5, 6, and 7 drop for me. Uh, because the early game can make up for the 5, 6, 7 drop, and the late game is so much value that it makes up for, like, the middle game. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, very happy with this deck, and uh, I'll be playing it as a value deck. Uh, and I'll generally assume that I should be able to win the late game uh, with two Stoneborn Generals. Plus, I am the king, so how can I lose? Welcome. You may bow before me. Ahoy, hoy! <laughs> ahoy, ahoy. Reporting for duty. Get him, bomber. Wanna blow something up? <laughs> yeah. Good job. Welcome. You may bow before me. Interesting uh, ability to brew the uh, Aug Merchant here. I like it. There have been some very rare arenas where I have liked having the 2-1 out on the board over having it potentially be playable. It's interesting since there's a lot of different ways to clear into this. I think I'm gonna do it this way. They were like, should I use the coin so I can play the Marsh Spawn? I was like, eh, yeah. <laughs> this ended up being pretty good for me. This getting hit for 3 damage would be good for me. Ooh, another hand of a doll. Oh, Sin Runner. 
I think Sinwin are getting hit by that is also good for me. I'll play... Uh, I should play Marsh Spawn. The totem getting hit is also good for me. I got the Stormwind Champion, which is kind of better Bloodlust. That one is only good if I'm winning, and I am winning, but it's, it's possible I won't be winning. I'm taking the safer pick. Less volatile pick. No, oh, my bloodlust would pretty suck right now. Uh, Stormwind Champion Shred. Pretty good. Mm, Alright. Trading optional, but... This is why I had like the early game meeting with myself. Where I was like, okay, I'm gonna play it as a value deck, so I'm gonna try to make sure that there's fewer chances for the opponent to get value. That's why it's important to have the pre-game meeting. It's late enough that I think I'm gonna wait until I get the muck pool before I play a soul. What day is it? Dig day. Ten out of ten. Draw me them. Oh my god. If I got muck pulls with this hand, he lights out the muck pull on two, muck pull on four. Play the Yeti. Ooh. Oh, womp womp. These things happen. The exit is this way. Followed. Very fast secret pick. Dead end. For my glory. I'm just gonna take a moment to say that a lot of people would play Serpent Shrine Portal here into Marsh Spawn, and that was definitely what I was leaning towards doing. Uh, I decided not to do it. Because I don't believe that the 2-2 is scary enough to Serpent Shrine Portal. Oh, womp womp. These things happen. I think this is a very reluctant play. I could play Yeti. And he is actually a much better trade for me. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of people play Caretaker there because, you know, this has upside when I draw Muck Pulls. But it's not when I draw Muck Pulls, it's if I draw Muck Pulls. I hope it's Avenge. That's really good for me. That's a good result.
So sometimes I play Arena when I'm a little bit sleepy. Yeah, not at the top of my form. I feel like this is one of the more top of my form games where I made two really small choices that matter. I played the 5-4 uh, instead of the Taunt guy. And what was it on three? I didn't play Serpent Shrine Portal. Now, of course, the opponent like missed big on two muck pulls, and that's very lucky on my side. But small plays that like don't seem like they have much of a difference can matter. Oh, finally, we got a muck pulls game. You stand before King Rastakan. Let's get down in the muck! Ooh. Never mind. Coin Feral? Question mark? And then on the next turn, I'll have two mana, which would just be hero power. Or do Muck Pulse. I could also play Youthful Brewmaster here and get the, uh, that's pretty good. Drink with me, friend. That worked well the first time. Got the Feral Spirit into Serpent Shrine Portal Curve. Pretty good. Am I buying the Alibaba Mega Dip? So, obviously, what I'm doing doesn't constitute as financial advice. That said, you know, it's just stuff that I happen to be doing. Uh, I did have a... I, I still do have a pretty big position in Alibaba, and I'm obviously not happy with the Mega Dip. I'm not buying more into it at the moment, because China is uh, refusing to disclose their GDP numbers. These are the risks of investing. Okay, portal, coin, aug merchant. It's gonna be the move here. Now with all that said, uh, despite the horrible performance of Alibaba, it is still a very profitable company and one of the biggest forces in China. One of the biggest successful companies in China. And I fully expect them to eventually uh, go up in price. I'm, I'm fully, you know, I'm totally going to be open to admitting that the, the price I bought in is, what, lower? Is that the right? Is higher. The price I bought in is higher than what I would say the fair value of the company is worth at the moment. Uh, so, you know, that's, I'm not exactly happy by that, but times change. Uh, but it is still, it has always remained undervalued, according to my, you know, assumptions. It's just that as the company has gone in, down in price, uh, it has sadly not become more undervalued. It's just like, oh yeah, I guess that the reason why I went down, yeah, that's justified. Yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, that's pretty fair. Yeah, that's fair. And it's like, it's still a good deal, and it's not, but it's not a better deal than uh, when I had bought in. Necessarily, even though it's like a cheaper price now. There's more information out there. So that's the. That's pretty much my view on things. I think that's a pretty. Whatchamacallit? It's a. How do I say it? Sof I don't want to say sophisticated, but it's a nuanced view. Where I'm saying that, ooh, that's that's painful. Well, at least he kills his three three. The view is basically I bought too high, but I couldn't have possibly known what was going to happen. Although, maybe I could have guessed on some of the things. And knowing what I know now, the price I bought in at was too high. But, you know, without the benefit of hindsight... Where you 
the purchase at the time was fine. And the purchase now, I would think, is still fine. Uh, just, you know, I'm not excited to buy it at the moment. Because I already own that much of it. Same one, repeated. At least he somewhat wipes out his own board too. I'm very surprised that I've had Mark Pool since the beginning, and like I haven't had a good chance to play it. In my view. Oh, I actually have the combo. Good, uh, two-card hand. Maybe I should have played the Maze Guide there. Crap. Hmm. It'd be pretty hard to remove this general, and you have to remove it. Oh, okay. Good card, good card. I was gonna be like, yeah, I was gonna take some tempo, opponent won't be able to develop at the same time, but I guess that card allows you to do both. Fair enough. Shovel Fist plus Muck Pools or just General. Are there any 10 drops I can evolve into that win the game? I mean, I should definitely play Shovel Fist because the Muck Pools is open. Plume Phoenix, get there? Yeah. Bomb oh. Huh. Wanna blow something up? <laughs> Dang, bomber. Again. Okay, it was a pretty fast pick. I should take into account that it was a pretty fast pick. Oh, wow. So therefore, I think the opponent picked either Alex Straza or Murazon. I think at this state in the game, Murazon is like the clear, obvious default, this will never be bad pick. Alex Straza is also, also really good though. It's one of the two, almost certainly. I think it's Murazond. 
Their name is Alex. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Name fake tell. Mm, might want to crush that Yeti. Yeah, seems good. If I crush the Yeti, then the next turn I will have three mana. That's not a good amount of mana. What if I attempt to... Yeah, crush anyways. I really want to protect 4-4, I think. And I didn't want my taunt totem to die if I got a taunt totem. This is a good card to evolve because bad stats for the cost. You get the goods. I'll stand watch. Even better if I manage to get it damaged and then you evolve the it. I'll stand watch. I'm running real good. Let's see, I want to get a Taunt Totem, which means I should attack first. Because then there is a higher chance that I don't get a, that I get not Taunt Totem, and then it doubles up. Yeah, that makes sense, right? It makes sense. Actually, I'd rather play the 3-4, it's fine. Basically, the only reason you button before chiseling is if you want to get more copies of a totem you don't already have. There might be more reasons than that, but it's the basics. I think I'm supposed to pick Acolyte because I have three mana left over. I definitely see the Brewmaster Murazon combo. I have enough cards. Alright, full valley. Okay, now we're getting into the turns where either side can just play Murazon. So I gotta always balance out my play by thinking, is that worth Murazonding? That's not worth Murazonding. So probably worth playing Walking Fountain, and then that'll make the opponent have a worthwhile Murazon turn. So that's not the end of the world for me if this gets Mirazonded. I think this kills both, yeah that's pretty good. And then I'm supposed to evolve this probably? No, I think I don't evolve this. It's only a 4-8 on the opponent's side, so it's actually a pretty good card. Oh, this is only a 5-5. Five, five. The opponent plays Mirazon, you get a 4-8 Lifesteal Rush Wind Fury. Oh, this is actually a pretty good card against that. I think I'm supposed to just keep the charge here. Yeah, that's fine. You think this is your time? It is mine. So if I play Murazon, it's 288, so that's pretty good. Oh, I got the 5-1 Evolve off. That's pretty good. I think I should take that for sure. And I do take two 8-8s. Eight eight I'm just thinking about... How bad could it be if I hit the face? Like, what's the punish for the opponent? I think there's no real punish. I'm playing this. Oh, that's a 9-9. Interesting.
Like, specifically, what's the punish for not trading into it? That's what I meant. Oh. Nice. I think I sadly can't afford to keep this in my opening hand. Because I don't have an early game play. Hmm, this is the card you like to see when you're going first. So the opponent doesn't go first, doesn't play a card here. I get to play my totem and then Totemic Reflection it. Alright, sweet. Cut him into reflection. Good curve. It's a good card to reflect. I think the healing totem would have been particularly good here, so... Ooh! Good buffs. Is it cold in the shadows? It's kind of nice from my control deck to get the armor smith. Usually the small amounts of armor wouldn't help, but this deck actually has a lot of weight gain. Unfortunately, the late game is Walking Fountain, which is comebacks from health, so maybe it won't matter that much. We can't play the Disguise there because we need the 1-1 one, one to go trade. The disguise is going to be a little bit tricky because I doubt I'll get that good a spot to mass board Disguise. Well, the opponent's looking to have a slow turn here with the tap. Okay, fair turn. Good turn for me to lay down the Sin Runner. Oh, it doesn't look like they can deal with it. Need to get rid of the small fry so horse actually has good targets. Oh. oh. Forgot Flight Master wasn't a demon there. Ooh. No good evolve targets. I don't think this. No, it's a good evolve now. That is a good evolve. Please tell me. Where am I? Oh, not bad. Okay, going second, the Totemic Reflection is less likely to go off. Portal into Morph Spawn is good, but that's a 3-drop into a 3-drop. Still keep both anyways. Okay. 
Could coin gorilla bot into marsh spawn. Seems decent. Or coin gorilla bot into portal. Hmm. Is it gold in the shadows? Good card the portal. To trade or not to trade? This is a control value deck. I don't really see much way to get punished. I think my trade is just his trade. Might as well take 5 health off of his hero. Even though it won't matter much, I think. The only way I get punished is if the 2 3 dies. Or I guess that happens. That's kind of a punish. But I'd like small AoE to finish off the Eddie. Eventually. Hmm. That is definitely a little bit of a punish. Should I crushing hand here? That'll mean the next turn I have three mana. Yeah, I should crushing hand. Should I totem or should I play rock pool? I think the 2 3 isn't very impactful right now. I just towed him. Gargon companions. We got Hercutus and Bargost. For my glory. Behold the might of storm wind. I think I feel fortunate that there was no Puffer. I'm not entirely sure if I want that 7-4 to trade in or not. I haven't decided yet what I would prefer. I think the answer I would prefer is not to have traded in. I think that Drake is better here? I think this play always loses. This play often loses, but like, sometimes they don't have something great. I stand by it. Ultimore was uh, tough to handle. A lot of stats. On a board he was already ahead on. I am that game uh, demonstrated the main weakness of the deck, which is the 5 to 7 drop range. I had all the late games, so I couldn't make up for the 5, 6, 7 turns with early game cards.
Wow, that's some tempo. Holy cow. Okay. I respect it. was not tidy. Stagadon no denied. Where's my fist when I need it? Fist. Wanna blow something up? Got a good 9 and a 10. I think this is the key turn for the opponent. This is the turn they can win if they play something really good. If they make a really strong play. Ooh. Okay, I'd say that qualifies as pretty strong. Qualification. This turn is slow, I'm totally good. Yeah. I'll be okay. That's a good draw. Mm. Yeah, it's a good draw.
hand plays itself. Because I have no choices. My lord. So playing the Drake basically trades my Drake for his treasure and that thing. Playing this, I kill a Stegadon and I have a 4 6. The opponent trades all of their minions in. A 4 4, rather, yeah. Well, it's worse than a 4 6. Eh, Drake seems better. Wait a second, you're not a human. Seems kinda sus. Okay, so I'll have a 4-4. Four, four. It's once again that thing. 4-4 four, four isn't very good here. Shovel Fist clears off the two cards to the right. That's decent. Is it cold in the shadows? Minions take to the streets. Hmm. I was thinking about, yeah, I should probably coin out the chisel. Yeah, coin out chisel. I think that's right. Start stacking. <sighs> coin out the rock pool hunter, maybe? Coin out the chisel. Okay. Such a good start for me. I was gonna pull out the hunter if there was no play. It'll be our little secret. Oh. Oh. Ooh, good buff.
<coughs> so, can target the portal and the Mars spawn. Easy game. The exit is this way. Cool. Thumb card. Yes, yes, right away. Was one of you. Interesting. I was actually afraid of this thing going to this thing. So good for me that it is not doing that. Time to crush. Yes, yes, brother. That was a lot of tempo on my side. Well fought, I can see. Yeah, that's just showcasing, I guess, the really strong shaman cards. Carving chisel into a portal. Totemic Reflection, for good measure. Rastakhan versus Valira. Watch You stand before King Rastakhan. Ah, is this a totem into totemic reflection? Or is the maze guide in the gorilla butt? We'd probably take the more certain the thing. This way. Oh, Murloc. Rock pool hunter valley. Where you followed. Over drop. Stegodon has not looked quite as pretty in quite some time. You're paying for my discretion. I hadn't even considered that this is a Acolyte combo, but it would almost certainly be better off used elsewhere. Oh. Cool. Two cards that I would consider not great in Arena played on the same turn. Sinister Scry Strike, Scribbling Stenographer. And there's another bad card. Weird. Welcome to Bad Card Town with Serdantos. Usually. You're supposed to play the good cards, so you never show the bad cards. Is it cold in the shadows? So it's weird to see cards of this bad of quality. Interesting. That drew the card and then died. That's cool. Hmm. D 
Do you believe in love at first sight? Absolutely not. Important job gets special power. Such foolishness. I'll elaborate, but I gotta finish out my turn here. This is a little tricky. So, this deals to all minions. <laughs> I forgot this was that bad. I think I want the two totems to survive. That leaves this at a um, low. And I use one of the totems to clear that off. For my glory. Alternatives? I don't want to play Drake, it kills my own totems. Oh, this kills that totem. No, it doesn't. I think it depends on what first sight means, also. Like, the first time you ever find out anything about the person, and you just see them, and say, oh yeah, I mean, of course people are handsome or beautiful. It can be a point of attraction, but it's like love! Statistically unlikely. Besides, if there were love at first sight, I'd have already found someone since so many people can lay their eyes on me. Right? So therefore, love at first sight can't possibly exist. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <gasps> oh, brutal. Hmm. I'll go with Feral Spirit. So I hit the Tark Reaper. No, I'm probably gonna have to crushing hands it. No, I'm probably just gonna have to sit here. I'm probably gonna have to sit here and then eventually crushing hands. It's just like right now is not a great time to crushing hands. All right. This could be a decent turn to crush. Yeah, I think it is. Next turn I'll have two mana. That's a totem. Crushing handsing that is just mana. But I have like no way to get through and this does actually kill the 2-1. That's probably most of the reason why I'm crushing hands because there's actually something I can kill behind the top. Huh. That was an interesting idea. I played the Acolyte because there was nothing I could deal 3 damage. And then I can crushing hands next turn. Sounds good. I should have uh, hit with the carving totem first. If I rolled the healing totem, I should have sent both into the 2 3, I think.
Okay, so I can either play 7-7. Seven, seven. This gets it out of range of the 1-1. One, one. Or I can play, what, 2-3-2. Two, two. I think 2-3-2 two, two is better here. The exit is this way. Ooh. Get the, you know, better get the board out for the champion that buffs the stuffs. That bomber loves me. Why do you call? Oh, thank you. A lot of people were saying Fountain too good here, but I mean Stormwind Champion too good there. They were both really strong plays. They buffed just the Acolyte and the Bird by just enough. The culprit was not tidy. They can clear those two. Which probably clears the path for the W. But it's not the best use of this. Any better play? Probably not. Walking Fountain is great there, but I can't help but feel disappointed. It's like, it was okay. I think if I only had one general in my deck, I would have held this one. But since I have two, uh, it tends to be good to just play the 10 mana card when I have 10 mana. So I don't get two of the 10 mana card in my hand. Okay, Torrent costs one. It's pretty good. Hard to pass that up. But I won't. There's the idea of playing your uh, bad cards last. I haven't gotten muckfuls very often. It'd be nice to actually let that card carry me. Come on, muckfuls.
I also haven't had the uh, 8, 9, 10 despair hand yet, so that's good. <laughs> that didn't come up. Alright, we're not three strong cards, though this isn't actually strong if it's just a neutral 3, 4. I greet you. Ah. Welcome. Can you do it, Bomber? Yeah. Good try, good try. The culprit was not tidy. Hmm. So I definitely want to play these two together. I guess that would be on turn 7. Probably bump the shield here with the steed. Play the hunter. Next turn go for the three-force combo. Why pop shield if you're going to the vault? Um, I wasn't a hundred percent sure I was going to the vault. This will be a devolve though. And there was nothing else I really could have run into. I guess the what the three one, the three one, and then this could have killed the one two. That might have been better. That actually would have been better. Everybody's happy till the book starts tomorrow. Wait, there's a combination here. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a while to see it. Let us dance the night. Oh, the guitar's not around anymore. Who would win? One Tendra or one Basilisk?
It was worth skipping. It was worth considering skipping Dig Day. If only Crushing Hand didn't overload for so much. virtue of being the only bounce target when I have no stuff left. Oof. I had this problem before with Warlock for Dinner Performer. I had three Dinner Performers in the deck, and it milled my Warlock deck too quickly. I don't think my... well, I need that Stoneborn in general now, pretty much. I also need the opponent to not have the answer to this. It's not a great answer, so that's good. But that might just be enough. Well done, well done. Cool, the whole deck. Solid deck, not insane, I think. Walking Fountain is just not quite as good as I thought it was, but still good enough to get me to 9. What? 150 gold! Okay. 